welcome back to the channel. Um, for those of you who are returning, thank you for coming back. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lee, um, also known as Cola Flipper. I buy bits and pieces secondhand from charity shops and car boot sales, and I sell them online for a profit. Um, I'm a part-time eBay reseller, and the fact is that whilst I've got a, a decent day job, it would be nice to have a bit of extra money for niceties. Now, that's the reason I resell. Lots of other people do it for different reasons. Some people want to do it for, for a lifestyle choice. Um, for me, I like to have a few extras and bits and pieces, so it's nice to, to top up my income, basically. But that's the beauty of reselling. You can do what you want, the way you want to do it, and you can make a decent second income. Depends on how you want to work it. For me, specifically, I don't have a lot of time. Full-time day job, trying to build a shed in the garden, refurbishing a house, uh, and father of two. So I've got a lot on my plate, which means that I don't have a lot of time. The fact that I don't have a lot of time means that I very, very much need to focus on fewer items, but higher quality items that make more profit because I don't have the time to, f to basically to, to spend on selling media, for example. If I had the time, I could put up lots of media online and I could sell it, but there are such small margins, it's not a good use of my time. I have about an hour, hour and a half a day maximum, so I need to get a real bang for my buck. So, this isn't a haul video as such. Um, I totally understand I've been neglecting you guys for quite a while, I haven't put up a haul video for a while, but what I have got today is, it's, not, it's a recent death pile. A lot of this is stuff that I've bought over the last month and I haven't had a chance to, A, I haven't done a haul video, but I haven't had a chance to list it yet. So I just thought what I'd do, I'll show you a few of the bits and pieces that I've got. We've got some real variety here. So um, electronics, kitchen equipment, um, sewing equipment, pottery, uh, more electronics, shoes and clothes. So quite a few random bits and pieces. Uh, excuse the plane, we're out in the garden today. Um, but. What I wanted to demonstrate is that whilst, yes, I do f focus a lot of my, um, I, I do focus on clothes and shoes because I know the higher quality brands and I know that I can, I can get very good margin on certain uh, types of certain brands, that I don't just focus on that. that. That is what I keep an eye out for, however, I, one of the things I do is, is make sure I'm educated in other areas so that I don't miss opportunities um, or as many opportunities as I if, if I just looked at clothes and shoes. So yes, I focus on them, but I do buy other stuff as well. And it's good to know what sells for what money because it then gives me a chance to, to take chances um, when an opportunity arises. So uh, I guess that'll do for the brief intro, well, three minutes, but let's crack on and uh, show you some bits and pieces. Right, let's start with a possible banger. This, oh, this is heavy. This is a knitting machine. This is a Brother KH881 and it's made in Japan. It weighs a ton. Now, I'm not gonna get it out now, but what I will do is I'll put up some screenshots to show you what, what came in there. Um, picked that up from a house clearance um, person a couple of weeks ago. They wanted 40 quid for it, but I didn't, obviously when you're buying something like that, you don't know if it works. A, it's made in Japan. B, knitting machines are just generally expensive anyway. I took the punt. Um, they wanted 40, we agreed on 30. Um, I still don't even know if it works. However, I knew that even just some of the parts and accessories that come with it, should it not work, just some of the accessories go for 30, 35 pounds. So I knew that I should be able to claw back most of my money if I, if it doesn't work. I still haven't even tested it or cleaned it. It needs a good thorough clean and a testing. If it's not working, I'll get my money back just on one of the, the parts that, and accessories that come with it. Um, I don't know what the main unit goes for if it's not working, but I would assume for spares and repairs, it would still go for a decent chunk. If it's working, two to three hundred pounds so that's where I used my um, my nows to, to figure out if all if worst case scenario is I'll get my money back on on the the bits and pieces best case scenario there's a lot lot better um, there's a lot lot 
bigger margins if it works out my way. If it doesn't work out, I'm not gonna lose. So that's how I weighed up in my mind. So that is an absolute banger, potentially. So we shall see. Another brand, a bit of electronics I picked up was this. This is, let's have Bluetooth headset. It's got a microphone that comes out here and it's got a docking station. Now, the reason I picked this up is because I recognize that brand, Plantronics. Now, in the office I work in, Plantronics used to provide all of our headsets for, for, for the different call centers and teams. Um, so I knew it was a good quality brand. Um, had some weight to it, came with a case, and it's got the little USB dongle, um, a Bluetooth dongle. If that's working, that's 80 quid. I paid eight for that. So keep an eye out for that brand. So that again was Plantronics. Haven't tested it yet, but if that's working, that is eight into about 80 quid. So very happy with that. Um, right, let's go from electronics to pottery now. Now, if you've watched my channel before, you'll know that um, I dabble in some ceramics and sometimes I've got an eye for what can make a bit of money and a lot of that is down to um, watching other resellers. So um, for example, Sean Abercrombie on Instagram, I follow and learn a lot from his Instagram feed. I'll put the link up here or there or wherever it goes. Um, but I picked this up because I thought it was beautiful. I recognize the name, it's Paul. But I also like the fact it's got this long stem, which I haven't seen. I've seen bowls with a short stem, but I just think that's really pretty. So I'm not actually reselling that. I really like that, and that is gonna go on the mantelpiece. So um, sometimes it's not about making money. I'm sure I could make a little bit on that, but the reality is I just think that's really pretty. So that has been kept. Uh, do, 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 yeah, Paul though, keep, keep an eye out for Paul stuff, very, very good. Right, I'll do a couple of bits of clothing and shoes and other bits. Now, not exactly the most stylish boots. These are a Chelsea style, but you've got baggy elastic. Normally, I would have thought, mm, with the, that sort of heel, kind of like a cowboyish toe, but not a full on cowboy boot. Mm, would I really get that? The reason I got this, they are made by RM Williams. They're um, an Australian um, manufacturer and they make really, really high quality boots. If these were just the standard sort of a, either a cowboy boot or just a standard working boot, you'd be looking at north of 100, 140 quid. Um, these may not be so popular, but I still reckon I'll get close to 80 to 90 quid for these. They need a good, I've already given them a clean. So I've, I've cleaned these with saddle soap. But what I need to do now is give them a bit of a nourish with shoe cream to tidy up the, the gnarly edges. Let me see if I can get that to focus. It's a little bit gnarly there, but a bit of shoe cream on that and then a polish and these will look good. So I should get somewhere around 80 to 90 quid. So keep an eye out for that brand, RM Williams, Australian, fantastic manufacturer. Right, next, uh, this is the charity shop pickup. Um, I work in, I used to work full time in the office, so I was five days a week in an office. Now I'm working one to two days a week in the office. My lunch hours, I spend in either getting change at the bank or looking in charity shops. And I picked up these beauties. This is a pair of Barker, Ooh, uh, yeah, you can see it in there. Barker shoes. Barker's a quality, made in England. Leather sole, leather inner. These are a toe cap Oxford. Um, difference between an Oxford and a Derby is in Oxford, you've got the these tongue flaps, uh, the, the flaps here where your laces go through, these are sewn underneath the vamp. Whereas a Derby, they're sewn on top and they're less formal. Um, these are paid five, should be able to get, once I've made these look good again, 60 to, 60 to 80 quid. Now, as you can see, they're a little bit creased up here. What I'll do, I'll spray them down with water, put a damp towel in there, put a damp towel on top and actually use a low um, heat iron and that will help relax the, the leather and bring it back to shape again, then stuff them with shoe trees to let them dry and I'll get these looking good again. Uh, but these need a good clean, good polish and these, yeah, 60 to 80 quid.
from five. Um, right, let's have a look at these. Another good brand to look out for, and that is Nudie. Got that little uh, Nudie jeans. I think they're Australian. Um, basically, um, I've sold a pair of Nudies before and I got over 80 pounds for them. Don't actually know what they cost new, but if I got them sec um, sold them second hand for 80, they're gonna be good. So I paid, I think it was three or four for these, so happy with that. I haven't checked comps recently, so not 100% sure. These are in good condition. Whenever you're getting jeans, always check that you've got your buttons or that the zip works. Always check the crotch to make sure it's not split. And uh, yeah, you can do all right. So these, these should be okay. Right, uh, a couple of, actually, I was gonna say personal purchases. This, this is a, a Deus, Deus Ex Machina um, T-shirt. I saw um, a Deus shop when I was out um, on my honeymoon out in Bali. And I just remember the seeing the really cool logos um, on the wall outside the shop. They're a, like a, a high-end, oh, I say high-end, they're an expensive brand and they do sort of motorcycle related clothing. Um, Deus Ex Machina, it's uh, Latin. Um, so Deus is God, um, so it's God from the machine. Um, what that, I think, what was that? It's like from the Greek tragedies and it basically the, the Deus Ex Machina means that there's been some sort of miraculous save. So what, there's an unsavable situation and then all of a sudden something swooped in and saved it. So God from the machine, God's come in and, and basically solved the issue. And that, that's what Deus Ex Machina means. So picked up these. These shirts new, t-shirts. This is a standard looking t-shirt. 50 pounds new. Uh, I bought three for uh, eight pounds, three for eight quid. So very, very happy with that. because I've been looking out for, for getting a, a genuine one like from the shop. Um, for ages, but I can't justify spending 50 quid on a t-shirt. Um, with this X, X Machina um, t-shirts, they have a little QR, QR label on there, which you can use as an authentication app. So, um, but I could, I could tell from the stitching, this is, uh, is legit. Um, so as well as this, so secondhand, I could sell this for around the 20 pounds mark. Um, so yes, I would have invested eight pounds and been able to sell that for around 60, but they're keepers. Um, talking of keepers, got a nice casual shirt here, Xenia. Don't know if it's that focusing. Ermen, Ermen de Giglio Xenia. So casual shirt, paid a pound for that. That is a keeper. So very happy with that. And another keeper, got a, a Gianfranco Ferrer shirt. So that's two keepers, pound each. Um, basically slowly upgrading my wardrobe by buying bits and pieces of, of luxury items at the car boot sales and it's cheaper than you can go in next Primark whatever it's it's a nice way of it's think of it it's you're saving yourself money you're getting better quality clothing um, and it's good for the environment because it's a you know the recycling culture is it's a good thing so um, if you're not already doing it there are some really, really nice bits of clothes out there. If they happen to fit you, great. If not, sell them on, make some money. Right, next, more electronics. So, this is filthy. It's a Denon. So this is a Denon, the top bit is the amplifier, bottom bit is the CD player. And look at the state of the buttons, how dirty that is. This needs a bloody good clean. So this is a Denon, uh, the, Amp and receiver is a DRA F101 and the CD player is a DCD F101. That came with some speakers and Denon speakers um, are often made by Mission. Mission's a quality speaker brand. Um, so I asked how much that was. <sighs> Would I normally pick something up that filthy? Not always, because if it's that filthy on the outside, it's really not ever been cared for. However, that also means that they didn't value the item very much either. If they haven't given a crap about it, then it means it should be cheap. And if it's not cheap, I don't want to spend up on something that I need to put a load of work into cleaning unless it's cheap. So I got the speakers, the CD player and the amp, no remote. 
got that whole lot for £10. She wanted 15 I said, would you take 10 um, And she was like, yeah. So happy with that. The speakers alone, obviously you, you take off the front grille to check, all the cones are fine. So immediately I knew, again, very similar to, um, to the knitting machine, with regards to that, if it doesn't work, I know those speakers, I can sell them for 30 to 40 pounds on their own. So immediately I've made a profit, not a huge profit, but if none of that works, then I'm still covered in, in the profit, and then those spares and repairs will do well anyway. However, once I've cleaned it all up, speakers 30 to 40 quid, that just the uh, CD player and the amp. I haven't actually looked at comps, but when I have sold denim stuff in the past, somewhere between 80 and 100 pounds, depending. I'm not worried about doing a quick flip. I am happy to get that cleaned up, make it look good, get the photos done, list it, set and forget. Whether it takes a year, two years, I don't give a monkeys because I've invested in my knowledge and I know I will get that at some point. I don't need that 100 quid now. I don't need it in a year's time. Things, I price high and things will constantly trickle through. So even if I have, have to wait a while, other things may have waited for a while and they've come in and I've made the profit at some point. Doesn't matter when, it's all coming through at some point. So I, I set and forget. So that is another great little buy. Uh, next, this is a brand to keep an eye out for. Aspinall of London. If you've ever been in an Aspinall shop or if you ever go to somewhere like Bista Village, they've got an Aspinall shop. Very, very expensive leatherware. Um, so it's a pink passport cover and a matching pink luggage tag, little luggage tag set. So, for the fact that they came in the box and I've got all the gift wrapping, means that I can push towards the higher end of, of the values. Uh, they wanted five and two, wouldn't drop it. I tried to even get a pound off, wouldn't do it. So I paid seven pound all in. Individually, I can't remember what they were individually, but it's selling as a set, I should be able to get close to 40-ish pounds. Um, Go and check out their website and see how much they are originally. It's a lot. So Aspinall is 100% the brand to keep an eye out for. Good stuff. Right, one that I'm gonna need some help with. I need to speak to the Luxury Pickers. If you have not watched their channel, you really should do. Um, Bethany and Austin have got absolutely incredible fashion knowledge. Um, both of them worked in, in high-end luxury fashion labels for years and they resell. They've got another channel as well which goes through lots of the luxury brands. And I've I've spoken to them from time to time and they've been amazingly helpful with regards to authenticating certain items. And in one case, actually telling me that uh, one of the items I picked up was not genuine. Um, so I now have a, a new laptop bag, basically. It was a, a Louis Vuitton uh, messenger bag. If it was genuine, I could have sold it for three to four hundred, but it wasn't, so I can't sell it. So now I've got a fancy looking laptop bag. Now, I'm gonna need some help from them, so I will be tapping that up for some info later. And I picked up this. It is a Balmain ladies jacket. Um, I don't know if it's real, but when it was six pounds, I wasn't gonna not pick it up. I thought it had to be worth taking a chance. It looks like it's constructed reasonably well, but I'm questioning it a little bit because it's only got this diddy little care label in there, which um, I'll send them some pictures. So I'm not massively convinced, but I thought for a six pound outlay, it was worth the risk. So we shall see on that. Um, if that's legit, which my gut instinct is saying it's probably not. If it is legit, it could be, you know, quite a few hundred pounds new. They're they're in the thousands, so this could be a few hundred quid. If that's legit, I don't know. I need a second opinion on that. But if you haven't watched them already, go and check out the Luxury Pickers. Follow them on Instagram and check out their channel. It just helps you. I, I know a lot of people watch my videos because 
they want to learn some of the random bits and yes I, I pick up some some decent high-end clothing um, but it's the, the same with their channel by familiarizing your your uh, by listening to them you'll familiarize with the, the, the vocabulary that's used and the, the the different brands that they pick up and what they look out for and it will help because all of a sudden you'll be out in the street and you're out in the field and you'll find something and you'll go oh it will twig and that can make you some money um, but they also, if you want to find out if something's genuine or not, you can flick them some pictures on uh, Instagram and they will have a look for you and authenticate it. So that I will need to uh, send some pictures off and see. If it is, I'll be a happy man. If not, six pounds, not the end of the world. One hour later. Continuing with um, fashion. That little logo. That is true religion. So, again, not 100% sure if that is genuine. But things that have made me think it is, is the fact that it's... I don't know if you can see the texture. This is a French terry um, inside. So, it's genuine, generally, when something's a, a French terry um, manufacturing technique, it, it tends to be a little bit more expensive. Cheaper ones tend to be sort of fleecy and if you look at if you see anything fake sort of um, activity wear type stuff it tends to have this sort of fleecy lining that wears through but um, I'm pretty sure this is genuine uh, and this is made in El Salvador I think on the label yeah I've got um, a magnifying glass loop and same with diesel, so as well as having the QR code, you've got this little silver strip at the bottom. With a magnifying glass and the loop, you can see this is tiny, tiny silver text to help you um, authenticate it. So diesel ones will clearly say diesel, true religion ones will say true religion. Doesn't 100% mean it is genuine because counterfeiters are pretty damn clever. However, it's a good indicator because ones that don't have that, I'd worry. Um, pretty sure that's legit don't know what the comps are I paid two pounds for that can't complain took a punt on this I've done well on on this I've picked up a drum machine um, last year I think I paid a fiver for it and I made it's over a hundred quid I'm pretty sure and I saw this and I didn't recognize the brand this is Edirol and this is a recording system. So you've got your sliders and bits and pieces for um, changing volumes and frequencies and, and reverb, etc. It's basically, you can make music. It's a music making machine. Connects it by USB. And you can tell something's quality when you've got all these sorts of inputs. So you've got BNC inputs and other bits and pieces, optical ins and outs. It's, it's a decent looking piece of kit. Didn't know if it's working. And I'm thinking, well, I, I don't know. It, it's got got the signs of being a quality item, but I didn't really know it. And when I looked at the back, didn't realise Edderall is made by Roland. Roland make really, really expensive keyboards. So I thought, well, if it's under a tenner, I'll take a punt. She wanted four quid, so no, she wanted five. I offered four, and we agreed on four. Everyone's happy. I'm happier. Even if it's not, I think it's a bit of an older tech, so I don't know whether it's still even relevant these days but for four pounds it's worth taking the risk if it all goes wrong and it's worthless am i going to kick myself over spending four pounds on something which is is useless it's not it's not going to kill me but if it's worth 80 or 100 quid which i think it is as, as, as far as i remember then we've done all right so there, there are times when you take the risk and times when you don't if that was 15 20 quid would i have taken the risk probably not but when it's under a fiver, it's worth taking a punt on a few bits. It's, again, handbag. Gents, don't be scared of buying ladies' clothes and handbags because it's just there's money in everything. There can be. Now this, I recognise the little dog. I think it's a dog. And that is Trusadi. Um, so this is a little Trusadi handbag. Um, I've given it a little clean up, need to give it a um, little bit of a wax and that will look fantastic. Trusadi used to be a really expensive brand. I don't know if it's still very popular at the moment, so I took a little bit of a punt on it, but I only paid 
one pound fifty. So can't complain. Um, I remember twenty odd years ago, Trasadi sort of polo shirts were were quite fashionable and expensive. So my thoughts are leather handbag got to be worth a punt at one pound fifty. Where are we? Picked up these again. Fantastic brand. If it's gonna, oh god, is it? There we go. Nicole Fari. So some wide leg Nicole Fari trousers. Um, I think wide legs are coming back in again. Uh, paid four pound for them. Lady said, uh, uh, I think they've only been worn once. Well, maybe your dog was wearing them because they're covered in hair. But for four quid, bit of Nicole Fari, you can't go wrong. Uh, a few more little bits. I've got a real beauty over there, uh, and a bit of kitchen equipment. Um, you recognize the brand, but I'll explain more about that in a moment. So two pairs of shoes, and then the bit of kitchen equipment, and we're good. So, they're a bit white, aren't they? So these, it's not often you see a white or off-white pair of shoes, especially with white edge. But these are Pals O'Leary. Again, another expensive brand. These, you can tell they've, they've not been worn an awful lot. Whilst there is wear to the soles, it's, it's not a lot really. So again, leather upper, leather lining, leather sole. And you've got your Blake stitch sole there. 42 is a decent size. Weight. That means it's gonna be for more of a special occasion. So it's either gonna be somebody who's a bit of a dandy or potentially wedding shoes. And that's what these were. Now, yes, there are scuffs, but I've got my full shoe care kit, and that includes quality um, leather paint, basically. So I can repaint the edge of those soles, and these will look as new again. So no issues with that. I've got white um, polish, I've got white shoe creams, I've got everything. So basically, you know those great big um, beauty cases that you can get? So I've got one of those, great big beauty case, suitcase size thing, and it's all shoe cleaning equipment, shoe polishes, shoe creams. I didn't buy it in one go. I bought it all as little bits and pieces and built it up and built it up and built it up. And that means that whatever condition I get shoes in, I know I can make them look great and I can make money. So it's good having investing in uh, a little bit of your equipment. Don't have to do it all in one go. Maybe if, you, if you're getting into shoes, a couple of shoe brushes, um, some shoe creams and shoe polish, and you can get away with that to start with. As you start selling more shoes and making more money, for every £30 sale, go and buy yourself another £3 tin of, um, of shoe cream. Build it up so that you can expand and increase your profits ongoing. Um, just treat everything as like a, yes, you want to take money out of the business and, and, and use some of your profits. But, but what I do, because I'm not reliant on this, rather than, you know, if I make a, a let's say over whatever period I make a £1,000, instead, instead of spending that, some of that gets put aside for tax, some gets put away for reinvesting into buying more stuff and then some of it whatever's left that goes on me having fun the family having more stuff so basically better food nicer wine goes towards nicer holiday and it means that i could pay for the sports car which was my early midlife crisis so that's why i do all this but always make sure you put aside what you need to pay the tax man always put some more aside into your pot for buying and investing in the business and buying better quality and higher quality and more profitable items. When I first started, I used to go to a car boot sale with 20, 30 quid. Didn't, I, I probably could have taken more, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And I built, and as I built my knowledge, my pot of money, which I built for investing in stuff, it's got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it means that I can take more chances on things. Some people only take 30, 40 quid to a car boot, would they have gone and bought that um, potentially working, not working knitting machine? I don't know. If you've only taken 40 quid to a car boot sale and that comes up at 40 quid, whether or not it makes 200, you, would you spend all your money on one item? Probably not. But as I've built up, I now go with 300, 350 quid. And it means if the right opportunity comes up, I've got all the other bits which will easily cover the outlay on that. If it all goes wrong, it's not the end of the world because I've got other items which which mitigate that risk. But I'm willing to take that risk because I've built that pot up to invest in stuff. So that that's a I would say yeah, it 
I don't know, everyone's circumstances are different, but if you can, just put aside your 20% of your profits for, for your tax man, and then put aside a certain amount for investing and building up your war chest of, of money to, to make great investments when you can. I'll stop talking waffle now. Uh, two more items and we are done. So, another brand to keep an eye out for. So, that's squiggly writing, that is Salvatore Farragamo. Makes shoes. Now these, need a little bit of work. And these, anything that's Farragamo with this little um, sort of brass plate on it, Farragamo on there again. They're from the Vera, V-E-R-A um, uh, collection. So I don't know the age of these shoes because the Vera stuff's been out, I think since the nineties. Again, you can see a little bit of scuffing. Don't know if that's gonna focus. A little bit of scuffing around the edges, but not too bad a condition. With a bit of shoe cream, a bit of shoe polish, I will have these looking fantastic. So a small little block heel. These, I paid three pounds for the, um, it was a, it was a clearance guy and he had uh, six pairs of shoes. They were all sort of Clarks and Berties and nothing shoes, except these. As soon as I saw the, the red box, I was like, ooh, let's have a look. I asked how much and there was a lady further down. Uh, so he was a clearance store and he asked the other lady, she said, take no less than five. And I picked them up and I said, I quite like them, but they're scuffed. I can't go any higher than three. And he was like, yeah, go on then. So um, yeah, from not taking any less than five to paying three, pretty happy with that. These, these are not going on eBay. These are gonna go on uh, Vestiaire Collective. These will go for somewhere between 100, maybe if I hold out 150. That is what I'll list them for. Will they sell for that? Probably somewhere between 80 and 120. So yeah, Ferragamo, keep your eyes open. Uh, and one last item, and again, another absolute winner, and this is some kitchen equipment. Duolet. So, paid up a little bit for this, look at that, lovely, shiny, except it's not, it's filthy, it needs a hell of a clean. Now, this is a Duolet classic. Oh, th th this design hasn't changed for 40, 50 years. The manual pop up and down toaster, get your timer there crumb tray underneath oh god that's going to ping in a sec anyway why did i go for this this is 25 pound and the guy was not budging julet their toasters are around 180 200 pounds for a four toast four slice toaster so paying 25 quite happy with that because even used ones go for somewhere between 80 and 120 pounds depending on condition um four four slice Four slice ones go for more than two slice ones. There are other uh, different designs, but this is the classic one. This is the one that is expensive and, well, they're all expensive, but this is the one that's a popular one that is a timeless design. Other reasons why I like it, because it's metal, I can clean this up and polish this and this will look as new again. So cleaning this up will be good. It looks barely used. Other fantastic things are most toasters because they're not a classic design, they are basically made to a budget. They are cheap plastics, they're flimsy, and when they break, they don't tend to have a lot in the way of replaceable items. Because this design has been going for 50 plus years, every single part of this is replaceable. This, this top cowling, replaceable. End pieces, replaceable. The um, heating elements, replaceable. Everything on here is easily replaceable. So even if it's not working, I can still get this to a 100% a working item for very little money. Yes, I have to go and buy some spares, have to fiddle about with it, but that's not the end of the world. So 25 pound invested, if it's working as it is, some, once I've got this clean and looking good, so a little bit of elbow grease required, this will be somewhere around the 80 to 120 pounds. So, Again, not a bad little investment. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea. Again, apologies for um, basically being a bit slack on the on the videos, but still trying to build this thing. I need to get it watertight before Christmas. And as you can see, I don't have any walls yet. I've got 
400 kilos of wood sitting behind me to, to finish the flooring and two of the walls. Need to get some patio doors for that side, patio doors for that side, and then hopefully we're watertight. But it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of effort at the minute. You can do two things to help me out. Number one, hit the like button. That, that really helps me. But more importantly, please subscribe. I think it was something like 35, 40% of my views come from subscribers. So we've got a lot of people who aren't subscribed. I only put out two, maybe three videos a month, if you're lucky. So I am trying to put the content out there, but more importantly, this content will help you make more money. Um, I'm very much along the lines of buy fewer items, but buy higher profit items. Now, I'm not saying that you switch to that um, same uh, technique or, or outlook, but what you'll see from my, my videos is which items have got potentially higher values and higher profit margins. And if that means that you pick what you normally pick and then you spot something a little bit different, which I've spoken about, you will make more money on that. So that, that's what you'll get from me. You'll get a little bit of an insight into certain brands and items that should make you a good profit. We're not talking your 10 pound, 20 pound profit. We're talking 50, 60, 80, 100 pounds. Um, I've actually gone in halves with another reseller recently, and we both, um, between us, we, we've invested 600 pounds to 300 pound each on an item that could be, uh, it'll be worth minimum four figures, but it could be multiple four figures. And it's about having, I'll go into that another time, but um, it's about having these little bits of nuggets of information that will help you make better decisions when you're out in the wild and make better buying decisions. Yes, go out and pick out items that make you five, 10, 15 pound profit. But the way I do it, I'm looking for items that will make me 25, 30, 50, 80, 100 pound items. So if that helps you find one of those every now and again, that's great. But if you can subscribe, that helps me, but it means that you'll at least see more of my videos and I'm not gonna bombard you two maybe three a month if that hopefully that helps so um that's it for the today thanks for your patience i appreciate that i haven't made a video for quite a while so hopefully this has been a little bit of a catch up and uh will give you some food for thought so uh get out of there make some money if you haven't subscribed please do and if you wouldn't mind clicking on the like button you don't need to smash it just that'd help me out see you next time